Hello and welcome back to my second episode of Road to CPTS. In this episode, we're going to be focusing on how I took my notes on each of the CPTS modules and doing a page of one of the modules as an example. Without wasting any more time, let's get into it. So by popular request today, I'm going to be showing how I structure my notes for the penetration tester path on Hack the Box. The overall layout of my notes is heavily influenced by Bruno Rakamura's blog post, which is this one right here. In this blog post, he talks about how he structured his notes in a tree and node format using Cherry Tree, and he includes a screenshot of one level deep of his notes right here, which we can zoom in and see how he breaks down his notes. Just based on this general overview image, we can see that he broke down his notes into six major sections, and those sections are information gathering, pre-exploitation, exploitation, post-exploitation, post lateral movement, and net exec. So my note structure is highly influenced by that note structure. Um, I decided to use OneNote instead of Cherry Tree because I wanted to take my notes on Windows. I wanted them to be easily accessible on all of my devices through the cloud, but you can feel free to use whatever note-taking app you're comfortable with. If I minimize all of these different notebooks, we can see that my first four notebooks here are information gathering, pre-exploitation, exploitation, and post-exploitation, similar to Bruno Rakamoris. Um, I don't have a separate booklet for lateral movement. I included it in the post-exploitation notebook just because I feel like there wasn't a whole lot in lateral movement to include its own notebook for. I think it could easily fit into post-exploitation. And I also don't have a specific booklet for NetExec or CrackMapExec. I know CrackMapExec or NetExec is a very powerful tool and it can be used in a lot of different ways. I know there's a whole hack the box separate module for CrackMapExec specifically, which I have not taken yet, but I just did not see a purpose of having a specific booklet for that one tool. Um, maybe in the future when I take that module, if I ever take that module and I think that it's worth its own notebook, then I'll do it. But for now, CrackMapExec is uh, a tool that's integrated into a bunch of different other sections of my notes wherever they are useful. Within each of the big trees, we see that there are uh, subtrees. For example, in information gathering, we have service enumeration, web enumeration, application enumeration, and active directory enumeration. If we were to take a look at his entire field manual structure that he also supplies in his blog post, we can see all of the subtrees in each individual node. So specifically for information gathering service enumeration, he has notes for each individual service that you may find on a CTF or a box that you're penetrating. So he'll have separate notes on FTP, SSH, SMTP, DNS, a whole bunch of different services that you may find and how to enumerate them properly. So if we go ahead and take a look at my notes and we break out that information gathering tab, we see that I also have similar items here. Uh, I have a service enumeration tab here with each individual service that gets talked about in the CPTS course. So if you just started out and you're creating your note structure, I would first recommend starting out your note structure into these four or five main categories. You have your information gathering, pre-exploitation, exploitation, post-exploitation, post and then if you want to separate lateral movement out separately, you can. And then also creating these folders or subtrees underneath each of these main trees. I would not recommend right away trying to create a bunch of different subtrees and folders that are multiple layers deep. As you progress through the CPTS path, you'll fill those things in but having that main structure of the main trees and the first level of subtrees will be a good structure and initial guideline for you to put your notes in. I didn't follow this structure one for one. I'll go ahead and show mine now. So for information gathering, uh, you don't have to worry about OSINT or social engineering. That's not going to be on the CPTS exam. Um, these are just my notes in general for penetration testing. So that's why I have these, but for my notes under information gathering, I have a subtree for asset discovery. Um, so this is useful for an environment with multiple assets or IP addresses that you're going to be attacking. Then we have the service enumeration that we share with Bruno Rakamura for all of the individual services that get talked about in the CPTS path. We also have a subtree for web enumeration and the different types of enumeration you can do against a web server. Then we have application enumeration, which is an entire module that gets talked about in the CPTS path. Any one of these web services or applications is fair game on the CPTS exam. So it's important to have the enumeration as well as exploitation notes in your note structure. And then similar to Bruno Rakamura, we also have our structure for Active Directory enumeration. Moving on to pre-exploitation, the first tab in here is vulnerability assessment, which is not a tab shared with Bruno Rakamura. Vulnerability assessment is a module in the CPTS path, but in my opinion, it's not really an important one. I don't think it's necessary to run a Nessus scan against the IP addresses during the CPTS exam. It may be useful, but I believe at least the majority of the vulnerabilities that you're going to be exploiting are not going to be 
found using a Nessus scan. This is more just for, you know, real life penetration testing. And also in the pre-exploitation category, we have a bunch of different shells and payloads. So here we start with reverse shells, a bunch of different copy and paste, easy Linux, Windows, and web reverse shells. And we have the same for bind shells, regular web shells, and then other payloads. Next in the pre-exploitation category, we have the Metasploit framework, which is also a module in the CPS path. The module basically covers how to use Metasploit. So everything that's covered in that module and the different sections of it have their own page in this Metasploit framework subtree. And then lastly, in my pre-exploitation tree, we have how to use web proxies. So things like burp suite and zap setup, intercepting web requests and responses, everything that you need to know to use burp or zap as a web proxy. Next up, we have my exploitation tree. The subtrees you'll want to have in here, or at least the ones I have in here, uh, that will be covered in the CPS exam are service exploitation, web exploitation, app exploitation, AD exploitation, and password attacks. Um, there will be no Wi-Fi exploitation on the CPS exam. But for my exploitation tab, basically everything that I have as an enumeration subtree also gets an exploitation subtree to match along with it. So in my methodology, if we discovered any services, we would first enumerate that service, discover any potential vulnerabilities, and then use the service exploitation tab to abuse those vulnerabilities. So once again, we have service exploitation with all of the different services that we may discover, web exploitation, basically a bunch of subtrees for different web vulnerabilities that we may discover and how to exploit them. Things like cross-site scripting, SQL injection, command injection, file inclusion, file upload attacks. Um, all of these are in a web attacks module in the CPDS path. So when you get to that module, they will fit quite nicely into this web exploitation subtree. Next up, we have the counterpart to the application enumeration, which is this application exploitation. So like I mentioned earlier, there is a CPDS module called attacking common applications. And in that module, we've got things like WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, Tomcat that gets talked about on how to enumerate and exploit. So I've broken out the two enumeration and exploitation into two different categories under two different notebooks. And at the end, I've got a link from the enumeration to exploitation and exploitation to enumeration, just for easier reference. But all of the exploitation in that module goes under this subtree here. Next up, we've got Active Directory exploitation. Once again, in the CPTS path, there is an Active Directory enumeration and attacks module. The first half of the module talks about enumerating Active Directory and the second half is exploiting it. So once again, it's broken up in my notes for AD enumeration and AD exploitation. And the last thing in this exploitation notebook that we have to worry about is password attacks, which also has its own module in the CPTS path. So everything in that password attacks module has a page in this password attacks uh, subtree here. Next up, we have the post exploitation notebook. This notebook has all our notes for after we've gained a foothold on the system that we're trying to exploit. This first page here is just for that fully interactive shell command that we can use to get a better shell or to upgrade our shell once we've gained a foothold on the system. Just nice to have. Next up, we have our file transfers page. So this is just a bunch of notes on how to transfer files to and from our device that we've gained a foothold on. Depending on the box and what's available to us, we have a bunch of different methods of doing this, including SSH, PowerShell, web file downloads, downloading files over RDP, SMB, FTP, WinRM, and then different code interpreters. Under post exploitation is where I put my lateral movement page. But in here, we just have uh, ways to pivot through a Linux box, through a Windows box, and then also some methods for pivoting regardless of its Linux or Windows. The miscellaneous and persistence tabs, we don't have to worry about because that will not be covered on the CPTS. These are just things that I've discovered through doing other CTFs or other studying methods that I think are gonna be useful for an actual penetration test. And then the biggest thing under post-exploitation is going to be our privilege escalation folders. So here I've broken out privilege escalation into Linux privilege escalation and Windows privilege escalation. The majority of the notes that are in these subfolders are taken from the Linux privilege escalation and Windows privilege escalation modules in the CPTS path. So example for Linux privilege escalation, we see a whole bunch of different methods for escalating our privileges on a Linux box. And then if we take a look at our Linux privilege escalation notes, I've broken down my notes into different subtrees. Um, the first one being different tools to use for uh, automatically enumerating for vulnerabilities to privilege escalate. It's kind of bare bones right now, but LinPs and LinEnum are two great tools to use for Linux privilege escalation. Next up, we've got manual enumeration for looking for privilege escalation techniques. Then we have our common escalation methods, which are all talked about in the Linux privilege escalation module. And things like path abuse, uh, having the ability to use sudo, Linux capabilities, different vulnerable services, the log rotate, uh, suet and guid binaries, cron jobs, you know the deal. Next up, we have a subtree for exploiting 
uh, Linux containers. So if we ever find ourselves in a vulnerable Linux container, we may be able to break out of that container. And this also gets talked about in that privilege escalation module. And then lastly, a quick section in the privilege escalation module is talking about quote unquote recent zero days. Um, they were recent, I guess, when the module was created, but they're not so recent now, but they are fair game on the CPTS exam. So I also took notes on them and included them. And then like every other module, there's a hardening and prevention section. So having that information for uh, the reporting section of the CPS exam may also be helpful. Now for Windows privilege escalation, we have a very similar setup to our Linux privilege escalation, starting off with common tools to use to enumerate for different priv privilege escalation methods. Then once again, we also have manual enumeration, gathering things like network information to see if there's potential pivots, uh, gathering information about the system and the different services and executables that are available, and then also gathering information about the user you have a foothold on and other users and groups that may exist on the system. And then based on what we discover, we have different notes for abusing those vulnerabilities. The first one being over permissive user privileges. This is a big section in the Windows Privilege Escalation module. Right here we have a bunch of different privileges that our user may be assigned that we can use to gain system or higher privileges on the box. We also have different privileged groups that our user may be in that we can use to gain system or admin privileges on the box. So that has its own page as well. Next up we have OS exploits, which is a subtree dedicated to exploits based on the operating system that's running and the version of the operating system. So if we find ourselves on an older Windows system, we may be able to abuse some of these exploits to gain system or administrator. Another big thing that gets talked about in both Linux and Windows privilege escalation is credential hunting, which is just finding credentials laying around on the system. So this has its own dedicated subtree for different ways to look for passwords or other credentials on the box, depending on the services that are installed and some common ways to find those different folders and files that may have credentials in them. Another quick thing that gets talked about in that module is Citrix Breakout, so I have a section dedicated to that. And then all of the other one-off privilege escalation methods have their own page in the additional techniques subtree. Things like if using scheduled tasks, the always install elevated permission being set, the Windows certificate dialog vulnerability, all things to check for if any of the previous methods have not granted anything. And the last thing that gets talked about other than hardening in that Windows Privilege Escalation module is pillaging. This is the act of just looking for sensitive information on the compromised system. So similar to credential hunting, uh, we can look for things like sensitive cookies, setting up key logging or screen captures, looking through any instant messaging clients, or even reading what's in the user's clipboard. So that is going to be my main note structure on the CPTS modules. I also want to quickly recommend creating a documentation and reporting notebook for the documentation and reporting module in the CPTS path. As you all know, submitting a professional report is a requirement for the CPTS exam. So it's very important that you have notes for developing that report, specifically in the way that Hack the Box wants you to do it. Bruno Rockamore also has a separate blog post for reporting on the CPTS exam and has a very nice method for generating the report using Sysreptor. So I also took notes on this blog post and his method is probably how I'm going to do the report during my CPTS exam attempt but talking about the report can be for a later video. So now that I've shown you my entire note structure, let's do an example of how I would take notes on the network enumeration with Nmap module, specifically for the host discovery page. So here in Hack the Box Academy, we have the host discovery page with everything we need to know about host discovery using Nmap. Back in OneNote under information gathering asset discovery, I'll create a new page called Nmap asset discovery. And as we're reading through the page, we can copy and paste or manually type out the things that we find important. For sake of time and simplicity, I'm just going to copy and paste, but I know a lot of people recommend that you manually type out everything yourself for better retention. So starting off here, um, this most effective host discovery method is to use ICMP echo request. That is something I might include in like a general tips section of my notes. Sentences that have bold text are generally going to be ones that we're going to take notes on. This sentence right here is also very helpful. Um, every time we run an Nmap scan, we are going to want to save a copy of it. This can be useful in real life penetration testing to prove that you've run a scan. It's also very useful to easily go back and check what the scan discovered. So I'm also going to include that in the general tip section. Generally, every time there's a subtitle with a command line, I'm going to copy and paste this as a reference for my notes. So if I ever need to know how to scan a network range, which will be important for an AD environment or environment with multiple hosts, we can just copy and paste that, our scan network range as a title, so it's easy to see. And then the example command here, 
And if I was new and I didn't really understand what this was doing, I would either include notes above it or below it saying that this is scanning the 10, 129, range, and it's going to cut out everything except for IP addresses that are discovered. I may even include an output section and then copy and paste the example output from the notes as well. In this case here, they even included a nice table that explains different parts of the command above. So uh, again, I would probably copy and paste this or uh, manually type out uh, what each of the individual parameters do in the command above, just so I know for future reference. As we continue reading, we can see uh, similar things we could do for scanning IP lists. Once again, copy the scan IP list title. Throw it in, copy the command, copy the table that explains what the different parameters do. And then if there's any information that I may find useful in these little paragraphs, I may include those in bullet points. And as we continue to read the module, this is a rinse and repeat process. And in the end, it should look something like what I have for my actual Nmap discovery. So in my real notes for host discovery, we have scanning the IP range, which we saw earlier. And then if we want to just output IP addresses that responded, we have a bunch of different examples for doing just that. And then here is the notes for scanning from a list of hosts in a text file. And that's just about it that I have in my actual notes for host discovery. You don't have to copy and paste everything that's in there. A lot of it is something that you just read and will remember, or it's not that important to take in your notes that you're just going to quickly reference when you're doing an actual penetration test or CTF. And the reason why in my actual notes I don't have the scanning options here is because later down in my notes I have a cheat sheet for all of the different parameters or the majority of the different useful parameters that can be used with Nmap. So if I ever needed to know what a different parameter did, I could just reference these scanning options, cheat sheets, performance options, cheat sheets, things like that. If you're someone who takes notes on literally everything and finds their notes very hard to read or to find specific information that you're looking for, it may be useful to throw that notes page into ChatGPT and ask them to clean it up for you. Something I like to do is start off with a prompt like this, where we say, I have made notes to help me in my pen testing studies, specifically for the Hack the Box CPTS exam and CTFs. Can you help me clean up my notes and make them more digestible? My notes are on blank. And then we would fill in that blank with whatever the page name of the notes are. Let's do an example of identifying the password policy in Active Directory. So here we would replace the blank with identifying the password policy in AD. And put a colon. And then on the page with your overly wordy notes, you can just copy this whole thing, paste it into ChatGPT, and send it off. And then ChatGPT should spit out a cleaner, easier to read, summarized version of your notes, which you can then verify the information is accurate and then replace your notes that are too wordy or hard to read. When you're doing this, please make sure that the notes are accurate and that you're not submitting any actual sensitive information into JetGPT. Otherwise, this is a great way to summarize your notes if you think yours are hard to read or if your notes are too long and you want a shorter summarized version of them. So that's it for this episode on note taking. If you enjoyed or found this video useful, feel free to like and subscribe for more Road to CPTS episodes. Next episode, I think I'm going to cover my methodologies and how doing some of the IPSEC CPTS path YouTube videos has improved my methodologies and also covering what I learned from the CTF so far. If you have any questions or you want to reach out to me, make sure you leave a comment or join my Discord if you haven't already. All right, that's about it. I'll see you in the next one. See ya.